I think one of the, the other major issues that we're coming to terms with is our extraordinary disconnection uh, from each other, from our ecosystems, from community, the world at large, and I think from our true selves at some level. We've, we've created a very artificial world. We, we wake up in one box, our house, we get into another box, our car, and we drive to another box, our office. And then we spend our day in front of various boxes, computers, televisions, iPods, cell phones. And we're living in this virtual world that at one level seems to give us a certain level of happiness. But I think it's a level of happiness more associated with an addiction than actually genuine happiness. And I think what we've gained in convenience and speed and uh, instant gratification, we've lost perhaps in our deeper need for, um, for quiet, for connection, for meaning, for relationships. And I find it tragic that we spend so little time in nature, we spend so little time being quiet. We're almost frightened, but if we stop for a moment, if we stay still, we stay quiet we might be missing out on something. I think it's bad in all generations but I feel particularly um, younger people now uh, who are literally on the cell phone or texting or on Twitter or on uh, the computer all day literally cannot bear uh, to be alone, cannot bear to stop for a moment and it's only when you stop, it's only when you're still that you really can connect to the world around us. Um, Eckhart Tolle wrote a wonderful book called The Power of Now. And, you know, since Buddha, um, many great philosophers, spiritual leaders, thinkers, and psychologists have shown that genuine, real happiness comes from that connection to the present moment, that connection to nature, that connection to ourselves, to stillness. And until we can re-establish that connection, I think we're going to be in serious trouble. And the, perhaps the most dangerous effect of this disconnection is our disconnection from nature. You know, the average food that comes to our table travels thousands of miles. Uh, we're eating foods completely out of season. Um, everything we do is damaging for the environment, pretty much. The way we work, the way we eat, the way we travel, the way we live in our homes. We've created this, um, again, this artificial world that we share the hubris that we're somehow beyond and above nature, when in fact we will be paying the price very soon. I mean, climate change is, I believe, the greatest threat facing humanity. And the tragedy again is that, yes, we're going through a recession, but 99% of our angst, our concerns are economic, yet we're forgetting that every day climate change gets worse. Every day we reach a point, literally, of no return. Um, it's entirely possible that this, this planet could be uh, virtually uninhabitable within our grandchildren's lifetime, if not our children's. And we're going at a faster rate than anyone thought we would be. And until we can actually accept that this is a human problem, and that the human problem really lies in these underlying beliefs and assumptions and values that we have, until we can accept that, it's almost impossible for us to change. I've always believed that the environmental crisis is not a crisis, a scientific crisis or a technological crisis. It's a crisis of the human spirit. It's a crisis of our disconnection from nature and our disconnection from the legacy um, that we're going to leave, the terrible legacy we're going to leave. I, you know, I recall the, um, I forget the name now, but there was a Native American tribe that everything they did was based on what was good for the seventh generation ahead of them. The whole of their society was predicated and built on looking after future generations. You know, wouldn't that be incredible if we could live that way now, rather than this obsessive focus on self-absorption, selfishness and immediate gratification. We've gone so far the other way and we, because we're technologically advanced, we make this mistake of thinking we're spiritually advanced, where in fact we're adolescent, if not pre-adolescent, in our beliefs.